Hey guys, um, I'm here to kind of talk to you today about volatility, which is a memory forensics analysis tool. Now, if you have any questions on installing volatility, I suggest you go to the blog I posted previous to this one, which tells you step by step how to install volatility and all of the dependencies that it requires to run the basic plugin, as well as some of the malware plugins. So, Today, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to show how to crack um, and that we can grab from a memory dump. So these are just Windows logon passwords here. So the first thing we want to do when we are examining memory is we want to get the image info of the memory that we are analyzing. So what that does is it's looking at certain file structures in the memory dump to try and figure out what operating system that this memory dump came from. And I should point out that sometimes commands that run in volatility can run either very quickly or very slowly depending on multiple factors. Depends on what you're asking volatility to do, how much memory you have running, uh, how much processing speed you have, and how big is the memory dump that you are trying to analyze. This one right here victimdump.dmp is only um, a half a gig. So it, in theory, is going to run a lot quicker than what normal systems would run, which now can be running on, you know, two, four, six, eight, these crazy amounts of, of um, space. So you need to take that into account that sometimes you have, to, you have to wait a little bit to let these things run. Anyway, volatility thinks that this memory dump came from a Windows XP Service Pack 3 uh, 32-bit machine, and it would be correct. So um, good for it. And now we can include that in our commands. So when we are, when we give it that command, the profile command, make sure you use double hash marks there. It will have a better idea of where to look for certain file structures. Copy and paste that here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do in order to grab our um, passwords is we're going to do a hive list. And then we have to give it our location again. Make sure this is right. And if you ever have any questions on how, um, you know, different types of plugins that you can run, there there's a website here you can go to which has all of them. So I say we just did hive list and it'll tell you what it does and um, it has a bunch of them here. So if you ever are looking at the help and you are like I have no idea what that is, you can go to this website and it'll tell you for all the basic plugins that come with volatility as well as some of the malware ones what it does and what it should be outputting. So very useful. Um, there's a bunch of other memory forensics memory analysis tools out there, you don't have to use volatility. Uh, HP Gary has two different versions. They have a community version, which is free, and then they have a pay for version, which, as you can imagine, would have a little bit more bells and whistles, a little bit more analysis tools involved in it. Mandiant also has a forensics tool called Memorize. So there's plenty of different options out there, and there's a decent amount of documentation on all of them, so that you can decide that I'm not really comfortable with volatility but I would like to try HP Gary's. There's enough documentation to get you started on your way to do your own analysis. So I think we're going to hit pause here for a second. Okay, so as you can see here, what this is doing is it's pulling all of the locations, both virtual and physical, addresses of hives that it found within the memory dump. So we're going to interrupt this here because it produced what we already needed. So we can see here we have some dat files, some empty user dot dat files, which are um, unique to each user, and then we have the general registry settings here: uh, SAM, security, system, software. So the only two we need though is SAM and system. So let's just quickly change this. Instead of hive list, we're going to do hash dump this will do is it'll go through the SAM and system hives and basically carve out 
all of the passwords and the salt that um, NT Landman uses to encrypt um, the files, the password files. So we need two more parameters here. We need dash y, which is our system address, and we are grabbing the virtual address here, not physical. Once again, if you have any questions about which one do I grab, go to that website that I showed you, and it'll be able to tell you which one to grab. So now we're grabbing this Sam here, and then we need to output this to a file. So we're going to pass that out to, we'll put it into, I don't know, let's hack this. Spell wrong, of course. So now what this is what it's doing is it's going into both of the registry highs and it's pulling out that data that we need. And if everything worked according to plan. Here we have the password for that Windows system. All resident in memory. So now Volatility can't crack that. However, we have another free tool called John the Ripper, which you can easily download off the internet, which will do that. And it's very simple to run. You just give it that command, and then you give it the file that you want to crack. And there we go. So one of the reasons why um, NT Landman is so easy to do is that it basically only allows you to put in 14 characters into your password. And even if you put in more, it just slops it off after 14. Then what it does is it takes all the lowercase characters and converts them to uppercase for you. Okay, so now you have special characters, uppercase, and letters that you can choose from. Which would still be a decent amount. However, what they do then is they take that 14 uh, characters and they break them up into two 7 character chunks. And then they use DES encryption to encrypt it with a known salt that you can find on the internet. So if you have both of those tools you can easily then derive what the other what the password would be. So you can see here we have for victim the victim machine, the victim username, which would be victim underscore bob. It would be the first seven with P A S S W O R and then the second bit, so that's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then D one two three. And then I should have said, if you don't go to all the 14, it'll just pad the rest of them with zero. So um, you don't have to worry about that. And then we have administrator 1 and 2 is consultant with a, an O. So there you have it. it um, there's still a couple more that I was trying, but um, you know these are this is a decent amount to get you going. So this is just a simple thing of showing you how easy it is to grab things from memory and including passwords and there's a lot more you can do with memory forensics you can use it to look for malware you can use it to look for rootkits um, you can actually grab truecrypt keys from it so there's a lot of different things you can do and hopefully in the next couple of videos that I do I'll show you some of the cool things you can do with with volatility so until then cheers thanks